All right, when I say first Jeep, this was my first daily driver Jeep. This wasn't the Jeep that got us started on Cherokees, but the one we did have, we, that's a story for another day. But when it come time to drive, my parents was like, what do you want to drive? No doubt, I had to have a Cherokee. So they pulled some strings, found this thing, and if I'm telling the story right, I may have to ask them, but I think it was a, a realtor and he drove it around locally he passed away and it just got sit in a field and we bought it for a little nothing back then the thing was pretty daggum nice i think it had about 200 220,000 miles and they just parked it so we bought it and think oh gosh it was disgusting right beside it there was a worm farm so like mouses and all this stuff was living inside the jeep i'll tell more about that when we get in the shop but got it i think we had to put a fuel pump in it honestly that was about it got to driving it but for years i chased mouse nests and you know 16 well that's what i was gonna say i'm 33 years old today i got this jeep when i was 13 that's 20 years i've had this same jeep and i actually still drive it i did take a break i'll explain later let's check it out obviously it wasn't like this when i got it if i, if I had a picture i would show you just a 91 bone stock cherokee was the way it came that's what sucks. I realized I grew up in the air. We had cameras that took pictures and you developed them. Well, we started getting digital cameras. Well, they was on floppy disk. You probably don't even know what a floppy disk is, but where they're at now, nobody knows. Have no way how to read the floppy disk. So that's where all like pictures was taken was on floppy disk and stuff. Well then at that point, I don't really know where cameras took off. I kind of just lost track, but that's when camera phones became available. Awesome took all the videos and pictures on your phone, but where those phones and pictures are today, they're gone. So that's what sucks. I waited to do this video after my Christmas, family Christmas, and I went through photo albums, everything I had, nothing. There's like two or three pictures I'll add, but everything else was on a phone that's probably in the trash, so that just sucks. But like I said, I got this when I was 16 or 13, I did all, I usually did all the mods when I was 16, so. We'll get in the shop and talk about it more. Like I said, it's there's gonna be things you're gonna make fun of because I was a kid. We all know we did stuff we regret as a kid, but it's still not in bad shape. I'll get in the, let me let's see the crank, come on. Oh yeah. I'll get in the shop where we got some light. My brother said I need to script these videos, but I just talk as I go, kind of give you the runaround. But I might be telling this wrong. I had to draw this conclusion myself. But as a kid, I'm not going to say I was bad, but I probably wasn't a good kid. Mischievous was the word, so I stayed in trouble. Well, my parents, my brother's first vehicle was, I think, around $7,000 as a Dakota. Well, when it come time for me to get a vehicle, I thought it was like 600 bucks which didn't run that's a different story so we got it and uh i actually think my i wasn't driving yet my brother had his driver's license and instead of driving the truck he liked the jeep so we drove the jeep he'd ride me around you know i couldn't drive well then he kind of he he was older than me so he knew more at the time he thought let's, let's build lift kits i i don't know how that's gonna work so literally we went to a machine shop and got I think it was three inch by a half inch wall spacers cut, three and a half inch. And well, right there, we put spacers under there. Like I said, this Jeep's transformed. We're gonna go through that. And then on the back, same thing, the same machine shop, he actually made us custom U-bolts. I think we did three in the back too. Put a set of 31s on it and it stayed that way for a long time. And like I said, it became my first vehicle. I drove it, you know, as a kid, you went, uh, places and road we mud road with it you know it's more in the mud back then as a kid and of course i had speakers in the back i had two 15s it's actually probably one of the most impressive systems i've heard for the amount of money i had in it oh uh, like i said i oh my gosh i've done so much of this jeep then back then where i was going with that portion like i said i'll have to think about what all i've done to this but I think I had it, I drove it, I was about 16 and a half. My parents come to me, they was like, do you want a newer, nicer Jeep? You know, as a, as a kid, what, what else would you say? I mean, I love the Jeep, I had nothing against it. And we went and looked at like a uh, 
I think the 99 Limited 4.7 Leather WJ. What could I say? So I think we gave around 6000 for it at the time. That's crazy. They're bringing the same money nowadays. Anyway, uh, got it. Drove it. Actually put a set of 22s on it. Thought that's who I wanted to be. Was not. Got rid of them. Wanted to lift it so bad. And like I said, that's my life story. We're not going to get on that. But I couldn't go back to this Jeep. So I got stuck in the WJ, which was fine. I liked it. It was a nice vehicle at the time. Wish I'd have kept it. Different story. But, so this thing kind of essentially got parked. And, like, my dream as a kid was to have one with an 8-inch lift. In my mind, I figured out back then, Rough Country's 6.5-inch kit was like eight eight ninety nine. I was like, if I could save up that much money and then build 2-inch spacers, move the shocks, I'd have a 8-inch lifted Jeep. Well... I graduated and got graduation money, about $2,000. What did I do as a kid? Went and bought Ford high pinion 44 axle, and I bought a Ford 9 inch 31 spline, uh, bought spools, bought four 513 gears, I believe, maybe 488, doesn't change the story. Well, I couldn't afford a lift kit, and like I said, this is at seven, 18 years old I'm doing this. This still blows my mind because not knocking every one of them, but most kids that age, nothing. They just, anyway. So at 18 year old, I bought, they're called third links for a tractor. Actually, I can go show them to you. I still got them. It ain't dark yet. I got to thinking, I still have the axles out of it, but I completely redid them, so they're not. Back then I had 2,000, now I think I've got about 10,000 in them, so that's just different time areas there. So again, my dream was to have a big Cherokee. I just thought that's what you had to have. It's kind of where I am with the other Cherokees, but like I said, I just thought the bigger, the better, everything. So stock axles, wait, I forgot that part. Let me go back and restart over. So at 16 years old, when I parked this Jeep up there, I decided that I wanted a big Jeep. I wanted that lift kit that I couldn't afford. So with stock axles, I decided I'm going to build my own suspension. And didn't have computers, couldn't research nothing. This was all like, what will work and what this. I didn't know what a three-link was. Never heard of it. And front end, I built a three-link setup. You know, the one that you paid thousands of dollars for. I, golly, I'm, I'm forgetting that I did all this. Like I said, 16 years old, I was fabbing all this stuff up. A torch and a stick welder. That's all we had. Yeah. So... I had factory axles, Dana 30. I don't even know what the rear end was. I don't know where it's at. But anyway, again, I wanted a big lifted Jeep. So if you ain't never seen, these things are called uh, top links for a tractor. They're heavy. You've probably seen these in your local tractor supply. If you start paying attention, two inch square tubing, you'll see a lot of that in my older life. My dad bought out like a bunch. So. These was like 19 bucks. So I think I bought, let's see, the three, four, steering, nine or 10 of them. 19 times 20, not good at math. What is that, 200 bucks? No, 400, whatever it comes out. Suck at math on camera. So I bought all that and I was like, I'm gonna build a lift. Don't quite remember the full scenario but I built it, and of course there was a few things I did wrong. And the biggest one was, if you know what radius arm lift is and how it works, I invented that in my head. And it would work. It works on Jeeps with rubber bushings. Well, it didn't work with uh, stuff that don't give. It wouldn't flex. So I learned that and then wound up, I've never in my life heard of trailing arm. Didn't even know it existed, but I knew what leverage meant. So I was like, couldn't afford springs. This is all making sense. I was broken poor. Couldn't afford lift springs or anything like that. So my thinking, I took some springs from maybe the front. And I was like, if they hold up a thousand pounds here, whatever. I said, if you move them forward, now they'll be good for 500. So one of these arms, probably one of the square ones like that. I made a plate and got it in there, made a spring pocket, 
And this is probably still one of the most horrifying stories. I wouldn't say that, but it was bad. So I had the spring and it was everything was working. It was holding the rear end up. Well, at this point I built dirt, or trailing arms with triangulation up top. So I was trying to scoot the rear end over and I had it on some makeshift jack stands. My dad's got a picture of those. I was actually using a, uh, a motorcycle jack with a floor jack to lift it up as high. He's a kid, he's stupid. But didn't have cell phone service in the shop, so you had to leave your cell phone by the door to get service. Was there by myself, nobody there. And when I reached in, I was kind of like up in, I had my head under the fender well there, big Jeep. And when I reached in to turn the top link, I had my hand here or something, that spring shot out and the Jeep fell. And no, you can't see, I still got a scar. The body and the axle, whatever it was at the time, pinched on my arm. And I'm talking, it was legit. So I'm sitting here freaking out like it's stuck. I figured that my arm was broke. And I'm freaking out, don't know what to do. And my phone's 50 foot over there. Nobody's going to find me for hours. You know, not dead, I know that. But you're freaking out. So I'm sitting there. And uh, just adrenaline. I took kind of like my sh shoulder here. And just shoved the Jeep up as hard as I could and took this took this arm and just bam knocked it out of there. Of course it was bleeding, stuff going everywhere. I just assumed it was broke. And it's funny, I didn't know what to do. So my parents had uh, security cameras. I just took off running. I was running circles in the driveway, didn't know what to do. Finally calmed down. And my neighbor, he he done started his drinking for the evening. Probably shouldn't have drove me to the hospital, but he did. Anyway, moving on from that story, I survived. That was scary. This is so weird, I've never done a video like this. But, like I said, built the suspension, finally got it all tried and true, everything worked. But, I got everything dialed in. Like, my front track bar mount was like a two inch by a piece of three eighths. As soon as I turned the steering wheel, broke right off. So, I had to learn, but still, the fact, at 16 and a half years old, I was fabbing up double triangulated four link, three link. And I used all this for steering on Dana 30s. Nothing really to see here. Like I said, I just had a bunch of them. Cut them down for square. Uh, I think that would have been my steering one inch bolts on that. There's all my hardware. That's where my, that basically mounted center of the Jeep. Made all that with, I think a torch. Let's see. That is the upper link. Oh, couldn't get to that so I welded a bolt. There's just some more links that I cut off. Like as a kid, you don't understand how strong stuff needs to be. So I didn't know. I just fabbed this stuff up. But uh, that would have been, I'm pretty sure, the upper link. Anyway. All right, so it may echo in here. But now I've, I mean, everything worked. It was on stock axles, and I never broke a single axle. Still, this, no, I broke a Dana 30. Now I remember that because it ran out on me, and I had to build disc brakes. Front axle, never broke a Dana 30. So like I said, never broke a Dana 30, but when I graduated, got some money in my hand, had to blow it. So I didn't even know what a Dana 44 was. I didn't know what a nine inch was at all. I didn't know what a 60, I didn't know none of this. We didn't have internet, we had dial up, but that's a different story. Didn't know how to research and didn't have internet on our phones. I mean, literally you could text Google. People didn't even know that you could text the word Google. So I hit up a buddy of mine had a junkyard. I was like, I need some bigger axles. He's like, what do you want? I, like, I don't know. So luckily he had a Bronco and a truck and that was the high pinion 44, which is actually a good axle for the choice. Uh, well, yeah, no, but had it. And I was like, well, I need a rear end. He's like, well, get a nine inch. They're great. So got a nine inch. Like I said, gears and spool, trust it, all that stuff. And I put it under there, you know, refabbed all the suspension up. This was at 18, and I'll just show you the axles. I don't think there's gonna be enough light, but you can see I've come back and put uh, reed knuckles, RCVs, gusted, a whole bunch of stuff. But So now I've got bigger axles, I'm all good to go. I think I run the same 36s that I was running for a while, and I may have broke a stub shaft, may not. Well then, well I can show you a picture. I decided that I could run 40s. And bigger tire, the better, right? So I got a set of 40s. All right, like I said, this this will help me out a whole lot. 
this is probably when I first got it. You zoom in, you can see the homemade blocks. Yep, that's a Dana 35. This is when I decided that I wanted to rhino line everything. Stickers, I don't really think nobody cares, but I thought stickers was cool as a kid, so I emailed tons of companies and just told them the situation that I wanted some stickers. Man, I had so many stickers showing up. Uh, let's see. Nothing else that you can tell from this picture. This would be, this was the, well, this is with the, me at 16 when I got the Grand Cherokee. Just bone stock. I decided I wanted wheels. I mean, it looked good, but it uh, turns out I was into more off-road. You can see this was the Jeep on Dana 30 and 35. And can't zoom into the lift, but you just have to assume. Uh, this is my brother's Jeep. We can focus in. I don't even remember having green springs, but I don't even know what them was. I think I just built spacers to make it uh, be big. Uh, crossover steering, didn't even know what that was, but I built it. Bumper, I'll show you, I built it. Those were, those may have been 33s. But. Here is me at 16, 17. Those was the new axles, 44, or 9-inch 44. That's the 40s, and that cage, let's go look at that cage. Man, that's so wild. We had fun. So I had no tools to build a roll cage inside, so I wanted, I think I wanted to do it, I don't really remember, but one of the kickers for the roll cage, the exo cage, was so they don't rub on the sharp objects, they just rub on the smooth cage. So that was kind of the purpose of there, but even with them 40s, it didn't rub bad, but I'll show you here in a minute, I had a Harbor Freight pump up jack, and I think it was a few days before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling the story true. So I was out there just hand pumping on this stuff. And just a few days before Christmas, my dad walks out and hands me a uh, air over hydraulic. That was a game changer. But the dies didn't fit. It bent like crap. But at 6, 17, 18 years old, I mean, it's still pretty good. So if you look, those are not good bends. They're all kinked. Uh, of course, I didn't have any notcher at all. Did all that myself. And didn't know how to do this, so I just did that and then filled it full of JB or filled it stuffed a rag and then JB weld. But luckily, I've never had to use it. I didn't really like how this didn't come back, but I'm the only one I ever seen do this. All the roof racks I put off, I reconnected all of them with each little tab there. So that one got a little V notch forward. All these have clearance. I actually had a radiator up here one time. I ain't telling that story. Not too bad for the amount of tools I had. And this bumper, I built it, I guess out of nothing. I had a different winch, but anyway. That's an old tractor draw bar. I'm pretty sure my dad didn't know that I stole that, but I needed thick metal. I assumed I needed thick metal. Like I said, as a kid, you didn't know these things. So yeah, always wanted to add something right in the dead center, just never got around to it. So you can tell as a kid, I was always building stuff, never satisfied, always crafting stuff up. Well, if you didn't know, my dad essentially does the same thing that I do with Jeeps, with appliances. So, had stuff sitting around, and I was like, you know, I want a cow hood. Everybody wants a cow hood. Well, I didn't have no metal. If you look right here, go look on the side of your appliances. You'll see this ridges right here. Took a side of a washer dryer, I don't even know, and found a piece of old railroad track and just started beating on it. Sit there and beat until I had a pretty good smooth transition. I think we had a MIG welder by then. And you can almost see the welds right there. So I got the hood built, took it to school. I was in auto body and actually bondoed it in. You can see it's all coming loose. Didn't do a good job, but as a kid. But still, building your own cow hoods it. 17, 18, it's crazy. Kind of a little closer look. You can tell it's an appliance. There's actually a piece of like rebar that goes across the back to support it. Let me raise the hood. So you can see spot weld right there. And I wound up cutting that out and putting a fan in there. For the later years of this Jeep, I fought with cooling issues. Didn't even know what a cracked head or head gasket was. So that's what I was telling you I had 
I was a kid. I had all, no, yeah, I had all electric fans and had that in the hood and then had the heater core run to the roof with a air conditioner condenser with a fan. I was a kid, just did stupid stuff, but as far as under the hood, I don't really think, I'm sure I've cleaned it up. Wound up, I don't think it really changed the story. Wound up, I pulled the uh, original motor out. No, I gotta tell you the story. Look right there, that'll tell you something. So as a kid, you, or I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call myself a kid. You always wanted to go deep mud holes, deep water crossings. You can actually still find the video on YouTube. I think it's my brother's channel. I'll put a link up, or put the words up here, but. I tried screen recording on my computer and then I blocked the sound. tried screen recording on my phone I don't know how to screen record on a computer but when I did it on my phone it won't let me hear the sound no more so I had to do this yeah. there's a hole called the blue hole and it's just water it's creek it's illegal but it's kid and we always just thought it's cool who could go through and I might add another video here my brother but keep in mind this is just the only videos I have this is actually on YouTube Tell the quality's good. See the front end's down in the water and the rear end's actually still floating for a second. Watch the suspension coming out of the rear. It's sitting on the bump stops. Now the water comes out. Didn't even know what a snorkel was. So every time we dive off in there, it hydro lock. Didn't know no better. Try to start it, boom, sling a rod. So we drag it back and I had a spare motor and I think there was nothing wrong with it, but I'd pull the head off, pull the oil pan, take and put a used piston in there, and wound up I did that six times before I uh, learned that I needed a snorkel. So I run out of rods of that motor, and I don't remember from there. What I was gonna teach is they sell the snorkels that go into your cow tray right here. That's what I kept trying and the stock airbox actually worked better because it would kind of hold a bubble. But as soon as you dive off in there, it's holding a bubble up here, all the water rushes over and goes straight into there. So I learned that the hard way. Wound up, we got some RV sewer hose and dude, we had these things like neck deep. What about this one? He sit there forever. Mr. B. Crazy. Dash was covered, everything was underwater, and the only thing we ever had trouble with was the headlight switch would stay engaged. Other than that, man, there's a lot of videos I don't have because I had to lose them, but that's crazy. Never had trouble computer, electronics, distributor, Nothing. We'd be underwater for a minute. Like, I had to leave this and sitting in idling. It was up to about right here in my pond for like hours until I get it out of there. So being that we always stayed in the water, carpet had to go. I think I did that before we actually got in the water. But I had to have speakers as a kid. So they're in the roof. And this is actually a different setup. I redid the headliner here a while back. But so it had water plumb up to here. Like, I had to find the steering wheel underwater, never had trouble. You know, we didn't stay there for a long period of time, but uh, switches, fans. This one had power seats, but naturally they quit working. Oh, that's another thing. I swear for goodness, we did kick panels. I can't prove it, but I swear for goodness, me and my brother was the ones to figure this out years ago. We wanted to take the doors off. And I need to do a video on that, but if you look, there's supposed to be two fingers right there. So we just cut the bottom one off and then put a pin, weld it, or a quarter 20 bolt. And then the connectors are somewhere buried off in there. Now, literally, you just pick the door up. It's, it's the same concept as a Wrangler. I think that's probably where I learned it from, but 
I swear, I don't know anybody else doing it. I don't know anybody else doing it at the time. Ground the bolts down to a point. So doors are removable. I guess that's about it. A lot of stickers. Oh, you can tell I'm that old. We didn't have LEDs. We had to do halogen lights. That's the same shocks that's been on this Jeep since I've had it. Yeah, nothing back here. I wanted a bumper. I built a bumper. Nothing special, but didn't have tools. Yep. Oh, what do you know? More speakers. Now the Jeep is like literally the ideal Jeep that people dream of. You know, it's still on tractor links. I'll give it that. They was noisy. That's what I tell people. It's like, if you get in and this Jeep quits making noise, something's broke. So, had it. And of course, it's not properly designed suspension. I get that. I was a kid. But it does work good. I think I've got pictures I'll put somewhere of it flexing. Flexed out good. You know, everything seemed to work pretty good. I just hated it. Oh. Uh, I know I'll run the same 36s for a while. I never actually run those 40s, by the way. Those was just mock up. I think I had some 38 and a half SX Super Swampers. And that's where I was going. Even on the 36s, I broke a stub axle. Then I got like U joints with sleeves instead of rollers. And then I broke another stub axle. And then I broke another stub axle. Anyways, like I said, we was just. On, in the growing up stage had, and I just honestly didn't like it. it you know it did all the flex and everything but it was so big it just wasn't fun it felt like he was driving a tractor through the woods I just didn't care nothing about it no I, I had a Jeep when I moved here everything was in working condition I just didn't like it wound up I think the motor kept getting hot seized up I don't know so it just got parked I started my business shoved it to the side and it's kind of where the beater Cherokees come in we started enjoying them my brother still had the black one you've seen in the picture uh, he had a job he bought a rough country long or short arm and he had it well then I started playing with a beater Jeep on 31s and what do you know his got shoved to the side that one's gone I can't do a story on it but then next thing you know, he's got a bitter Cherokee, and then the big lifted Jeeps just get shoved to the side. So for years and years and years, this thing just sit. And one day, I was like, I want a Jeep that me and my wife can go camping and literally just drive. Don't do nothing crazy, put tools, fishing stuff, and just go drive and like normal people, drive it back on the trailer. Well, this is street legal. So I have drove it on the road, so that's the typical off-roader, but that's not what I'm really known for, but this was my rig. So like I said, it was on the 44, the 9-inch, and the tractor link suspension. I parted a Jeep out that had a uh, Rough Country 6.5 kit on there, and I looked at it, I was like, I don't really want to sell it. And I thought of this Jeep, I was like, let's just put this Jeep back factory. So I'm going to get it on the lift, and you're going to see some stuff to make fun of. It's cool, I don't care. But this thing rides and drives and does absolutely amazing. Just probably a dream come true to a lot of people out there, but I never find myself in a situation to use it. I've used it like once or twice. So this is the part that somebody's gonna make fun of, but if you actually know what's going on, this is actually nice. I didn't have links tabs, I didn't cut them off. So when I went back with a short arm, I was like, let's just lower everything down the same as the lift kit. So if you look, that arm, lower arm is literally straight. This thing rides and drives like a plum factory one. Uh, I'm sure it is a little heavy, which probably helps out. But as far as off-roading, those short arms do really, really good. Do better than a long arm, I know that. So some of the stuff you're fixing to see is the original from 20 years ago. And some of it is recent stuff. So if you make fun of what I did now or then, I don't really care, but I'm gonna turn the light on so I can't turn the camera back around. Uh, this part, we're probably gonna start getting jealous. It's a Dana 30, got ARB covers. It's on RCVs, see 456 with true tracks front and rear, and that's the 44. We'll get back there. Uh, crossover steering, just something I had. I think that's probably a ZJ Pittman arm. 
uh, Rough Country. I think I bought that new Tra adjustable track bar. All the lift kit had adjustable hardware, so I was able to put it exactly where I wanted. But you can see, just literally drop these down six inches. And this one's kind of a guess because I didn't have anything to guess at, but works absolutely amazing. Didn't do WJ brakes for some reason. I don't really know why. But you can see this is some of my hobbled up crap as a kid. That would have been where the track bar bracket dropped down and went across uh, just to frame gusset. Really don't even know what that is. Uh, yeah, got some extended bump stops. Oh, that's one little mod I forgot to even do. The rubber will break loose from the transmission mount, so there's a chain that wraps through there. I think the old timeies do it. But, uh, not much up here. Had a used slip yoke, so I did a slip yoke. Stole the speed sensor. But got a slip yoke eliminator, and yes, that is a 44. I, I can only assume I've probably owned in the neighborhood of 3,000 plus Jeeps because I've sold some, scrapped some. I've had two 44s on my property. So I told you the plan for this and I was like, this has got to be the better use for the 44. So if we're out wheeling nighttime and need the best axle to not break, I think that was it. So same thing, true track in it, ARB covers. I don't know why I did the WJ knuckle or brakes back here. It's kind of weird, but whatever. But, uh, rough country, expensive shocks. That probably helps ride good. And then that was just Rough Country's leaf packs. So if you look like right there, that's some stuff I had and then I wound up putting this and that's where the lift kit long arms did bolt. So I didn't technically mean to build frame stiffeners. It just wound up that I had metal from back there all the way. And see, that was a trial run and I had to build this back because I didn't have that. But, uh, 3 8 rock sliders. I built them when I was a kid. Just for security, y'all have seen that I put a little brace on that right there. And then I did do the inner brace up there. And hey, that fits with RCVs. I didn't know that. Or I forgot that. My bad. So you can tell it's just back essentially factory setup. 36 inch boggers. Never been balanced. Doesn't death wobble at all. You can cruise down the highway. So yeah. It's kind of random, but this was like a high-end package Jeep at the transmission thing. It's the only 90s model I've ever seen. If you have a little dot right here, it's the keyless entry. I finally got tired of it. it well, no, it's sitting there while the Jeep sit for so many years and corroded. So I, mean, I had to throw it away. But this Jeep, when you put the battery cable on, security goes off. And I've tried my best to find it, but I cannot find what the security is on this thing and uh the only way to get it off was to have that clicker and you had to it was just one button you click click it was just a little square anybody's dealing with that the blue wire and the black wire if you just touch them together it'll turn that security off so we started doing the whole water crossing one thing we figured out if you kind of look like this is essentially a hull of a boat so when you dive off in there you know it's trying to fill a cab up but this is like the hole and kind of like a fish swims like eating off the bottom when you go off in there they'd start floating up in the rear and the motor would just be sitting there and you'd be driving the back tires were essentially in the air and you're just kind of just dragging across there so figured out if you take the doors off it would fill the cab up get to the bottom you could drive through it and then as you'd come out the water would all go to the back Literally be sitting on the bump stops because it's so much water. Oh, that was one true story. Went through one and come out. My buddy uh, reached and grabbed a fish. He had a fish in his lap. That's a true story. I was there. I think I got it covered. Uh, that's one thing. I've never did a video where I kind of more or less story tell like this one. And I promised myself when I started YouTube, I said, you are not going to sit on a bucket and tell a story. So I try to always include stuff with it. But at the same time, I feel like I've got, I feel like I could sit and talk, but I feel like I'm cheating the system. So kind of give me some feedback on that one. And next time this Jeep is in here, it's got power windows, but obviously they don't work good. So I won't, well, this one's busted out. I want to put manual windows in an electric setup. So that's the next thing on this Jeep. 
So like I said, just give me some feedback on this. If you like this style, don't. Won't waste my time. Appreciate y'all.